Welcome to our lecture online. You may have wondered by now if there's actually an equation that describes the normal probability distribution graph. It turns out, yes, there is one. And here it is, in all its glory. Wow. Remember that sigma represents standard deviation. We know what 2 pi means. This means exponents. So that means e to that exponent. And then we have x, which is the variable that we use, the independent variable. This is the mean or average. This is the standard deviation. And so if you can calculate the mean and the standard deviation, you can plug that into the equation and you have an equation specific for your specific experiment or example. As we have used in the past, when we had 100 high school students shooting baskets, they got 10 attempts. We found that the average or the mean was 5 and the standard deviation was 1.58. If we take those two numbers and we plug them into the equation for here, here and here, then the equation turns into this. That's then the particular equation for that particular example. And you can see then, of course, you can apply this to any sort of normal distribution or normal probability distribution. So what do you do with it? Well, you can now plug in values. Notice we can plug in zero baskets made, one basket made, two baskets made, three baskets made, and so forth. So notice we changed the variables a little bit. We use x and y, x being in the independent variable and y being the dependent variable. y represents the probability of that event occurring. And notice that there's about a 25% probability that we shoot a 5, about a 20% probability we shoot a 6, about an 11% probability to get a 7, or to get seven baskets, about 4% to get eight baskets, 1% to get nine baskets, and smaller than 1% to get 10 baskets. Same on this side, remember that the normal probability distribution is symmetric about the center line, so we have the same probabilities going in this direction. If we now plot those points for anywhere from zero baskets made to 10 baskets made, and we plot the points available, this then gives us that very familiar graph, but now this graph, what it means is it means that the, the height at various baskets represents the probability of shooting that many baskets. Hmm. Notice that all the numbers are less than one. Then there's one more thing. If we then calculate the area underneath the curve, and we add all that up, the complete area should equal one. Of course, all the probability of all the various ways in which we can achieve the number of baskets that we add all together, all the various baskets should add up to 100% of the probability. We cannot have more than 10 baskets and not less than zero, so this represents all the possible different combination of baskets we can make. The number we can make in each one, if we plop that all in there, you can then get to your probability graph, which simply is represented by the area underneath this curve. Now, calculating the area underneath the curve is a little bit beyond this particular course, that would be a more advanced course on, on statistics, but at least we'll show you some other techniques to bypass the difficult part of finding the area need to curve. Why would it be so hard? Well, what that requires, it requires us to integrate this equation. And yes, indeed, that's a very difficult equation to integrate, and it's hard to get an exact solution. So that's why it's an iterative solution and we need calculators or computers to do that. So therefore, we're not going to get into that here, but as long as you realize, yes, a curve that represents a normal probability distribution has this general equation, and then plugging in specific values for the mean and for the standard deviation there and there, we can get a specific equation for your specific example. And then using a calculator, you can plug in values for x, and we can then calculate the function, the function of x, the probability that a specific event can occur. Here I did that for you already, just using my calculator in advance. We get all the various values, we plot the points, and sure enough, the points do represent that exact curve of the normal probability distribution. So now at least you don't have to wonder anymore, there is an equation, it's kind of a mean and ugly looking equation, but it can be utilized to be able to graph your specific test or example or experiment, and that is how it's done.